We are in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, which is an absolutely beautiful place, wonderful people. But when we were going up 20 years ago, it was and still is a very conservative place. Even though it's a college town that we're in, it's all about who are your people and where you go to church. I felt that you could not be gay. There was not that option. It was, you know, early, mid 80s. Elton John wasn't even gay at the time. He was bisexual. You know, nobody else was gay in Harrisonburg, so I had to fit in. So I needed to change. I needed to figure out a way. So I was hiding. I was living this double life. It was very painful, very lonely, because nobody really knew who I was. I never thought Ross would admit openly that he was gay when we were growing up, because he was so tied to the church and his family. It was like the big pink elephant in the room. Everybody knew he was gay, and nobody said anything. This is the one with Carla and Lisa, and then of course me with the lip gloss on, not realizing that um, lip balm looks like lip gloss. I think the 20-year class reunion is going to be a big step for Ross because I think it'd be the first time he's presenting himself to people he grew up with as a gay man. Ross, I had suspicions you were gay. You know, women probably had some conversation. You know, the guys were, oh, there goes Ross Gay Duke. I mean, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we haven't. We, I can and never so hear that we didn't one. hear. Yeah, we didn't hear that one. It doesn't surprise me that people called me gay, Duke. And as a 38-year-old, I can deal with that. At that age, I would have probably flipped out. Yeah. I would have probably isolated even more. You had more than a suspicion that Ross was gay. <laughs> I didn't necessarily have suspicions. I hope so because when you hang out with, you know, beautiful, intelligent people like myself and Lisa and Jenny, you know, and Faye and Carol and you never ask us out. It's like, okay, this is not good for one's ego. Please <laughs> tell me he's looking for a man. <laughs> I really wasn't given a choice for college. My parents sent me to Liberty University, Jerry Falwell's school. They supported him. They watched him on television. I was Jerry Falwell's makeup artist for one summer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, you were right there, you were right there. You know, if you know you're a gay man, what makes you pick Liberty University where you know the ostracizing, the isolation, the anger's gonna be ratcheted up four or five notches? I mean, I can't imagine, I mean, pick a good Just liberal stay, arts stay school where you can, you. yeah, where you can, you know. A Christian school is the best place for a closeted gay guy to hide because you can't touch the girl when you're on dates. Right. You can't be physical. It's, it's, the, it's the proper thing. You have to act like a gentleman. So you could go through and get married and never have sex. I thought that you were going to become one of those guys who was, you know, quote unquote, really Christian. Because how but many people do we know in the community who you clearly are gay and have done mm -hmm. things like that? And mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, right. They're like, well, I'm married. You're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honey, was that, two, was that two men we were talking to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> During that entire time, I was so invested in creating this generic Ross, this mask. I knew that I was gay, but I knew that I was homosexual. I didn't want to admit that I was gay. Like, that would be marching down Market Street with the rainbow pride flag. That was gonna be political. That was gonna be an activist. I knew I was a homosexual and that that was what had to be hidden. In 1991, I entered a residential ex-gay ministry. I voluntarily entered the ex-gay program. I was not forced to go. I was not brainwashed. But at the same time, I was being given false information and I was being given the hope that I could change. I just felt like he was going to be so miserable because um, there was absolutely no way he was ever going to be to live the life of a straight man. He just, there was no way. And I said, I'm so terribly worried about him that if he doesn't come out, he's going to either end up crazy or he's going to kill himself. There were so many years of just white knuckling, of trying to be straight, of trying to be straight, of going and realizing this isn't happening. My life isn't changing. Are these too blue or should I go with the black? And just coming to the realization of maybe this wasn't the right thing for me. And maybe there is some sort of truth out there that I'm not hearing. Also, we have the lovely Sister Jane Doe. Oh. Yay! Being a newer member of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, I think Jane is still finding her voice. We really do consider ourselves like uh, a Mother Teresa, 
and sisters who out, go out and do work and help the community. We raise money. I vow to share the lessons, joys, and pains of my life so they may engage the growth of others. As Ross, I was always uncomfortable with my physical appearance because I was made fun of for being one of the heavier kids or not as athletic as the other kids. We're in the locker room, sixth grade. We're all changing. We have to go in the shower. I'm continually like, they're continually like making comments about how I screwed up, how I messed up the game, da 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 da. And they turn me around, push me up against the wall of the shower to see if I had, to see if I was a boy. And at that moment, the wall comes down. That's when I kind of shut down to the idea of sports and athletics. One of the first groups that I kind of fell into when I moved to San Francisco were the athletes involved with the gay games. They were either people who had been closeted in their sports for so many years, or they were people who had never been involved in sports before. I won a silver medal in track and field. And that was like one of those big moments where you're just like, okay, everything connected. So the Gay Games was really my place to feel acceptance in San Francisco. Ross's contribution to Team San Francisco and to Gay Games, it's, it's just invaluable. People love Ross. He's just always there. He's always got good energy, and uh, I would be lost without him. So Ross is involved with Team San Francisco, and Sister Jane and is part of this order that is really involved in helping change the community. Growing up in a Christian community, that's the example, to give and to serve and to love. And amazingly, that's what I've taken with me. I mean, it's uncomfortable as a leader in the church because you, you still have your, your, your poles that are ready to go at each other. I want to be clear that that doesn't represent Christendom as a whole and that there are not only Christian people, but Christian leaders who are convinced that God can create us in a lot of different ways. I'm hearing that, and it, I, I know that I'm touched, and I know that as we're talking, we're connecting, but it's almost like if I actually accept that, there's gonna be 20 Boom, years, well, <laughs> there's gonna be 20 years of stuff come up, and there's gonna be this, all this, it was there all along. You know, you hear the Christian spirit of giving, and to me, he really embodies that in what he's giving back to his community, that he can be the giving person he is in an environment where it's respected, and people are okay with him for who he is. I'm not welcome in the conservative Christian community, so I go out to the gay community, people who are ostracized, and the giving and the loving play out there.